Have you ever signed on the dotted line, bought your new or used car and realized, after thinking about it, I think I got hosed? Whether it was a high interest rate or you actually crunched the numbers and you figured out you paid double of what you should have, that's a sad reality that a lot of people get wrapped up and tangled in this mess of buying a car. Now we all know that cars and trucks are the second largest investment in your world or in your life. Houses being number one and while a lot of people say cars, trucks, SUVs are not investments, they're certainly not good investments but they are an investment in your time as well as your income. So we have to consider them and they're, they definitely consume a big part of everybody's income. So it honestly burns me to the core when I see people grossly overpaying for their cars and I hear some of the stories of people, how they got ripped off, how much they ended up paying after a term. That's why I'm helping people. Anybody that I know, I will help them to the best of my ability to coach them through, make sure that they don't get hosed and make sure and ensure that they get the best possible deal. And it absolutely is destructive to hear when people walk away getting hosed because in fact, you can't fix stupid. So here we go. I want to share some stories with you. It's on Reddit, for example. A gentleman by the name of Specific Gain 5710 says, A guy came down during the lockdown and got the stimulus package in 2020. He happened to be working at McDonald's making barely over minimum wage and then combined that with the stimulus check and went and bought a $35,000 vehicle thinking that he could afford it. Now, while he normally made $1,600 a month with the stimulus, he made a collective total of about $2,400 a month and he didn't even have enough to cover the cost of the vehicle without the stimulus package. And we all know where that ended up going, Pew, up in smoke. So unfortunately, this person is in a true world of hurt. Another salesperson, Regulator Don Carl, actually comments, but a person that came in looking for a $10,000 Avalanche, you know, the old Chevy Avalanche, not a particularly great product, and it was quite old. It was a 15-year-old vehicle with 200,000 miles on it, and he couldn't even get financing through the bank to get a special, he had to go to special lenders to actually get and qualify and got dollars to buy this old clapped out Chevy. End result, with his high interest rates, he ended up paying $26,000 for a $10,000 truck. And sick of AZ comes across a situation where somebody wanted to challenge her a $45,000 unit, but they had subprime borrowing because they didn't have great credit score. After the sum of all of the payments with interest tacked on, the total was about $85,000 owing on a $40,000 car. Another one, CZ Durandal actually comments about a gentleman that came in looking for a little beater car. And we all know that a Nissan Micra in Canada started around $10,000 MSRP. Sadly, after this individual cited on the dotted line, he ended up paying to the equivalent of $25,000 to what equates to a $10,000 vehicle. We won't even talk about depreciation because that's another part of this conversation. Pfft. And then Shenanigans 239 commented, a 20 year old came in looking for a Range Rover. It was an older vehicle. It was a 2013 with 85,000 miles and we know 100,000 miles and they're pretty much done deal. 27% APR for 72 months. They'll never get out of that. It ended up being about $1,400 per month monthly payments for this vehicle. And when you actually crunch the numbers, it takes you up to almost a hundred grand is what they paid for this clapped out worn out Range Rover. Dawn's 150 said, a young lady came in, she had a 2020 Toyota Camry SE, that's a special edition or sport edition, and she just didn't like the non-tinted, so she literally traded it in. Same year, 2020, Toyota Camry SE. Similar mileage, similar condition, but it had tinted windows. You know you're going to lose money on that transaction too. And wait till the end, we have a doozy. I can't even believe people actually spend this kind of money and you'll never get out of debt. We'll share that at the end. However, Buff Tree Farm actually comments about being a hot tub salesperson. They said they were selling it to this lady who only needed it for about a year, but she paid $24,000. I mean, this thing had every bell and whistle you can imagine. Pop-up screens, waterfalls, the double everything, speaker, subwoofer. TVs the whole nine yards, 24 grand, and she was walking away from it, going to leave it at the house, the rental house, after a year. I mean, some people, you just can't fix, stupid. And then Tuffenstang's actually comments rebuttal to that is, how does a person even get through life being that dim? And then another salesperson actually laid this out very nicely. A customer walked in, wanted to buy this car, it was listed at $14,900 MSRP. Then there was an $800 discount, minus a couple hundred bucks for some other widgets, took you to $13,900. Then there was a $2,180 rebate, which took it to $12,520 total vehicle price. But then the out-the-door price was $18,250. 
So the payment turned out to be 475 bucks for about 72 months or about 24%. If you run the numbers and the person pays off, makes all those payments right to the bitter end, they're gonna end up paying $34,200 approximately for what started out as barely $12,000. Ouch. But the next one is really, really heartbreaking. And I see how so many people get wrapped up in emotions. They see the shiny paint and then they get trapped into this problem of they want more and their instant gratification. But we haven't finished paying off the old car. Well, I want that new car. A lot of people get that. They want the next shiny thing. And this is one of those examples of where people truly got hooped. Now we're talking about a 2024 Kia EV9 that this customer had. And I want to share a little story that Calvin Ling shared on X about an invoice that was found in the glove box of this vehicle when somebody was rummaging around prepping it for sale that they saw what this person actually ended up paying. Now we have to understand that the EV9, sure, we know that a lot of the Kias were sought after, so people were in some cases paying a little more than they probably should have and quite often more than MSRP, quite often, quite frequently. Never should happen, but it was. So get a load of this story. This particular customer got an interest rate of 10.65%, which clearly is slightly on the subprime perspective. It isn't a particularly great rate, although it's not the worst, but they took it out for 84 months. Now we got to remember, base MSRP of one of these EV9s happens to be about 81,450 bucks. So it's still beyond me how all of a sudden the price jumped up to 100 $107,065.42. Now it's not entirely clear how that happened. It could be a $25,000 dealer markup because we know a lot of that was happening or it could be just rolling some negative equity. Maybe they had an existing car that they still owed some money to the bank and this particular vendor said, yeah, we'll wrap that up into the whole deal. We'll make that car disappear and we'll just throw it in and ball it up one transaction. So that could have been one or either, but there was $25,000 on top of the base sticker and then this is where it gets real. Because this customer was actually putting zero dollars down, and remember, I always recommend, particularly when you have higher interest rates, the more you put down, the better off you'll be because you'll end up saving on those interest rate charges. Not just your monthly payments will go down, but you'll also shrink the amount of interest charges you're going to pay. But this person paid a total of $45,252.62 just in interest charges alone on this EV9. Those interest charges are more than a base EV9. V6, full MSRP and full disclosure. Yikes. So once this person's all wrapped up and they're paying off every single payment of $1,813.31 per month, the full payment value as well as interest is going to take a total investment of $152,000 and in change. Pfft. You really can't fix stupid. If you talk to any salesperson out there, they've all shared stories of how they scam the next guy and they scam this couple and they scam that young daughter and they scam these old couple. And these people are full of stories like that because it happens every single day. And that's why I'm here. I really have to share these tips, some of these tricks and hacks because we don't wanna be on the losing end. You don't wanna overpay and definitely higher deposit, smaller payments, don't get over your head and don't exceed that 20% rule when you're buying a new vehicle. Keep your payments down, keep them controlled and, and minimize your interest payments are ultimately the best thing. Also, if you see that next shiny, fun looking car, don't necessarily jump to the pump. Go home, think about it, toss it around, maybe come back in a week or two after the dust has settled and the emotions have dropped because often end up getting snookered and buying on a whim because your emotions get the best of you and that's when you're likely to overpay. Remember also, cash is king. Don't tell them you have a trade-in and don't take the extras. And since we're talking about Kia EV9s, be sure to check out that why electric vehicles are bad. These customers think so. There's a real good reason for it. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll see you all real soon. Bye-bye.